Hey guys, fishing and stuff. Today, we're going over a few things that'll make bank fishing easier for you. Cause it's always nice to make things easier. Know what I'm saying? Yeah, we know what you're saying because you say it all the time. Anyway, here we go. Number one. A couple of weeks ago, I made a cart for fishing at the beach. I also showed a cart that you could buy that was pretty cheap that you could use at the beach as well. Well, typically, when you're bank fishing in fresh water, most people use some type of wagon. Me personally, I used the wagon that we use around our house, and it's just an old beat up wagon that I bought at Harbor Freight. And it works pretty good for bank fishing. And I really don't use it when I go to a spot and I'm gonna have a long walk ahead of me, that's when I'll take my wagon. They also make wagons that fold up, you know what I'm saying? That way you can fold that wagon up and put it in your trunk if you have a car. I have a truck, so my little beat up wagon works just fine for me. And the most important thing is it makes it to where I only have to make one trip from my truck to my fishing spot. And that makes fishing easier. There's actually a YouTube channel called Chunky Cats Catfishing. And he uses one of those fold up carts and he's got lights hooked all over this thing. I mean, it's kind of crazy. When he gets to his fishing spot, his cart becomes his light. And those black lights on his cart makes his rods glow. Green has slack, slack. I mean, that's pretty dang cool, actually. What do you call a fish that won't shut up? A big mouth bass. What do you call a crankbait that won't shut up? I don't think that's funny at all. Unless you're bass fishing or crappy fishing, something else you're gonna need to make your day bank fishing easier is a fishing stand. I grew up using a forked stick to prop my rod on. Just sitting here, not catching nothing. I know somebody put a log over there. I guess it's to prop their rods on when they come fishing. And that works fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you graduate into catching bigger fish, you're gonna need a fishing stand. That's just the way it is. I made two videos on fishing stands. And they're basically carp type fishing stands. One of them was a regular stand and the other video was about an adjustable stand. And both of those are cool, but I made a third video. I made a stand sort of like them, but it was for spinning rods. And it actually turned out pretty good if you like to use spinning rods fishing. All three of those stands are gonna hold your rod very securely. But recently, I ran across some more stands that I really liked because they're very small. The name of those stands or take down rod holders. And you know me, I saw them things and I was like, I'm gonna make me some of them. But after I seen what he charges for them, I can't make them that much cheaper, honestly. I mean, when I bought mine, I think they were $12 a piece. Now the stands came unpainted. I got them in the mail and I had to paint them myself, but I don't mind painting them myself when they only cost $12 a piece. Know what I'm saying? And I went over on his page and he's got videos of a truck pulling the rod while it's in that stand and it don't come out. Now I ain't never caught no truck fish before, but I'm going to because I catch big fish. I'm just saying, you know what I'm saying? But the main reason I got these stands was because they're so small, they're so light, and they're really affordable. I mean, I'm just saying. Now, if you get some of these stands, I've used my foot to drive them in the ground. But it's easier if you take a hammer with you. The way he makes the top of those stands, they're pretty strong because I've beat them in the ground a lot and they hadn't bent or anything yet. You just beat those things in the ground and they'll hold your rods perfect. Something else I liked about them, if you've ever grown tomatoes or something and used steaks, it's hard to get them things back up out of the ground when you're done. Well, these stands just pull right back up out of the ground, but they still hold your rod strong. It's kind of weird, but cool. Like I said, they're called Take Down Rod Holder Stands. I'm pretty sure he has a Facebook page, but you can check those out if you don't want to make your own stands. And if you do want to make some, I've got videos on making rod holders. Basically the same principle, you know what I'm saying? But for what he charges for those stands, you better off just buying some. Where do goldfish go on vacation? Around the globe. Now, if you're going across some tough terrain, and a fishing cart just won't help you, then you 
can get yourself a fishing bag. I made a video a while back about a survival fishing bag and I put little bitty rods in them and you could basically could take this bag anywhere and it had all kinds of survival stuff in it. And it was cool and all, but if you was wanting to do some catfishing, hybrid fishing, carp fishing, stuff like that, I found a bag on Amazon that's pretty dang cool. And it really wasn't all that expensive. This is my bestie fishing bag. Yes, you heard that right, bestie fishing bag. This thing is pretty dang cool. From the bottom to the top right here is three foot exactly. Has this really big pocket that runs all the way down the side that you can store stuff in. It's got a cool carrying strap made onto it. And if you flip it over, it's got rod holders made on it. That's pretty awesome. It's even got little things that holds the top of the rods made onto the top of it. And this thing's designed to hold five fishing rods, which works out really good because here in North Carolina, when we're bank fishing, we can use four fishing rods. If you're boat fishing, you can use as many as you want. Some states, you can only use two rods, but it says you can only use two rods. That don't mean you can't take four rods. You could have like a backup. If you was catfishing, you could take one to catch bait with. Know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Now, on the side here, it's got a zipper, so you can actually open this thing up and stick stuff through the side of it. So I'm gonna load this thing up and I'm gonna show you everything it'll hold. And first things first, one of the most important things I'm gonna need is a chair to sit in. So the chair fit perfect in this thing. I mean, look, it's perfect. The chair ends right here at the green part. So couldn't fit any better. Next thing we're gonna have to put in here is I got five of these takedown rod holders, which I really like because, like I said, look how small they are, and they work really good. But next, we're gonna stick our rod holders in there. No matter what kind of stand I use, sometimes I like to have an extra one, just so I can bake my rod without laying it on the ground and getting it all scratched up. I'm gonna stick a flashlight in there. I'm going to put some extra line in there. Got me some extra hooks just in case I lose some. We got a folding fillet knife. You always need a knife. I got a small first aid kit I'm going to take. Extra floats. Everybody needs a good pair of pliers. Sinker slides I had laying around. We're even gonna take some of this erase scent remover. It's hard to believe, but all that stuff fit inside that pocket. That is crazy. Something else we're gonna need, these work rags. You buy big old packs of them. I like keeping these around the shop because I do a lot of DIYs and they come in handy, but I also take them fishing sometimes to clean my hands on when you get old stinky bait all over them. Now we just need to stick our fishing rods in there. The problem is we need two piece rods for this setup to work right. And I got a lot of rods stuck everywhere, but the only two piece rods I have are spinning rods. I could use spinning rods, but most of my spinning rods are small and I was wanting to catch some catfish. So I got to looking for some two piece casting rods, which is very hard to find. Finally, I went up to the Bass Shack in Shelby and they didn't have any two piece rods, but what they did have was some two piece combos. You see that right there? It says Zebco 808. These rods came with Zebco 808s on them, but the price of this combo wasn't much more than a rod. So I bought the combo, took the 808s off, and I put me some bait casters on. And now I got me some two piece casting rods. So I'm gonna break these down and we're gonna install them in our bag. We got the ultimate little fishing bag. I mean, this thing's pretty cool, actually. The rods stick out just a little bit past it, but I got seven and a half foot rods, and that's not bad, actually. Especially when you think everything that we need to go fishing 
is right here in this bag. So now all we got to do is take this thing fishing. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying. So hopefully some of this stuff will make your bank fishing excursions more enjoyable next time. Because let's face it, even if you got a boat, like I do, there's some kind of nostalgia to bank fishing that just takes us back to our childhood and it's fun. Normally, I do DIYs on my channel and I got a lot of DIY videos, as you can see. And if you like this video, then you should probably go check out this video or maybe this one or... But either way, go check out one of them. I'm serious. Go check them out because this video's over.